Who's your commander? Good luck. Equip? Move to combat. Resolves. Right. Now, before you attack Does me. anyone have an answer? Well played. Good game. Hello, this is Jumbo Commander, and I have a very special deck tech for you today. It's Grimlock, Transformer Tribal Commander deck. Grimlock is a very special card. It's a Hasbro promo, and Grimlock Dinobot Leader is pretty amazing. Let's take a look at what kind of deck we can make out of this crazy silver bordered card. One red green white for a legendary artifact creature, Autobot. Dinosaurs, vehicles, and other transformers, trademark, creatures you control get plus two plus O. Oh. And then you can pay two and convert a transformers toy you own to its other mode. Grimlock Dinobot Leader becomes Grimlock Ferocious King. You flip this card over and then Grimlock Ferocious King is a legendary artifact creature dinosaur. It is an 8-8 trample, and then you can pay two to convert it back to its other side. So this is a crazy transformer tribal general that honestly is very interesting if not slightly powerful. So how do we build a deck around something so crazy and silver bordered as Grimlock? Well, I think we can focus on these three categories, dinosaurs, vehicles, and transformers. So let's talk about dinosaurs. Jisath Sun's avatar is one of the most powerful dinosaurs. It's the headlining legendary dinosaur of the set. And honestly, it could be the head of a great commander deck. And it doesn't necessarily fit into this deck because we're splitting all of our energy between dinosaurs, vehicles, and transformers. But it's just such a massive dinosaur, I thought I'd lead off with it. But there are a lot of dinosaurs that have really good big combat stats. Goring Ceratops, oh, double strike. Burning Sun's Avatar, a really cool three damage to a creature and then three damage to an opponent. The newly spoiled Gitala Primal Hunger is a gigantic creature that's going to be super cheap if Grimlock is buffing your other dinosaurs. Verdant Sun's Avatar is just a huge dinosaur that can gain you a bunch of life, and Carnage Tyrant is just a really good card. And honestly, we don't have a lot of dinosaurs, so we're going to include every one that's even kind of good. One thing I want to point out while we're on this page is you can see a lot of really intense mana requirements, double white, triple red, three doubled green cards, and so we're going to pay extra close attention to having a really efficient mana base. But you know, big fat dinosaurs don't actually take as much advantage out of Grimlock's pump as many smaller dinosaurs, and so we can take a look at dinosaurs that put out other dinosaurs. Thundering Spineback and Registor Alpha can really go wide with dinosaurs and then take advantage of that plus two plus O. And Huatli Warrior Poet could give us a couple dinosaur tokens here and there. You know, we have actually a few really good dinosaurs that are more flexible than these big beaters I'm describing. Kinjali Sunwing, Death Gorge Scavenger, and Rampaging Ferocidon. These three have very specific abilities that can be very, very good in certain circumstances. And so I feel like it's really great to have flexible dinosaurs. Not just all of them have trample and keyword big, but they actually can interact with your opponent's strategies. One of my favorite dinosaurs that's going to conclude this section is Waking Sun's Avatar, because it's a board wipe on a dinosaur. Amazing. And this is really going to hit almost everything except for your own dinosaurs. One-sided board wipes are really powerful. Just remember that one of these sides dies to Waking Sun's Avatar, and the other one doesn't. But I'm a big fan of board wipes in this deck because we're also going to be running vehicles, and vehicles do a great job of dodging board wipes. And so I'm going to mention just the highlights. Cultivator's Caravan is one of the best vehicles because it's a mana rock as well. Ballista Charger has some great synergies I'll explain later. Renegade Freighter and Untethered Express both have Trample, and so they take more advantage of Grimlock's plus two plus O. Oh. If we look at a few more vehicles, we have Sky Sovereign and Smuggler's Copter that take to the air. Smuggler's Copter is 
particularly great because of the card draw. Bomat Bazaar Barge, along with its alliteration, also has that ability to replace itself. There are plenty of other vehicles, but not a lot of them stand out as really powerful inclusions. Uh, this is kind of similar with dinosaurs too. We've only had one set of dinosaurs so far, so even though there's some great ones, it's really hard to fill out a whole deck just full of dinosaurs without including the subpar ones. The same thing is kind of true with vehicles. And so maybe we finally have a deck where we can play both of them because Grimlock allows us to combine them together. I like that. I like the ability of melding tribes together, especially ones that are underrepresented, to make sure to have one coherent strategy. But of course, I left out some of my favorite dinosaurs because I wanted to use them to highlight a strategy, and that is my enraged strategy. Enrage is a very cool mechanic that came out in this set. You can see it on Ranging Raptors and Ripjaw Raptor. When these dinosaurs are dealt damage, you get an awesome effect. You get to put a basic land onto the battlefield tapped, or draw a card. That is a worthwhile effect, so if you can keep triggering this Enrage ability, you're going to get tons of value. There are a few more dinosaurs that also have really powerful Enrage abilities, Snapping Sailback, Fungusaur, you can put plus one plus one counters on those creatures when they take damage. Bellowing Aegisaur will pump your whole board when it takes damage, very powerful, and Suncrown Hunters will keep pinging your opponents over and over again. And of course there's some dinosaurs that enable this Enrage ability. Raging Sword Tooth, when it comes into play, it will deal one damage to each other creature. You could coincidentally wipe your opponent's board, take out some annoying one toughness creature, but you could also trigger all of these enrage abilities. I love it. But we can include great cards that continually trigger enrage, not just one enter the battlefield trigger. Pyrohemia, two red red at the beginning of your end step. If no creatures on the battlefield, sacrifice it. You can pump one red into this enchantment and it will deal one damage to each creature and each player. Oh, for every red you get a new Enrage trigger? Oh, this is amazing. And it's also a really powerful board wipe. This is a color-shifted Pestilence, and Pestilence has made a mark on so many different formats. This is a really powerful card to play. And also, you can use it with Impunity when you have vehicles that are just artifacts instead of creatures. Speaking of which, Ballista Charger also does a similar ability to Pyrohemia. You can attack and deal one damage to target creature or player. You can ping your own creature and draw a card or pump your whole team. Man, these synergies are starting to work together a little bit better than I thought. And there are some other creatures that have really powerful synergies close to Enrage, but not exactly the same. Vigor is intense. Three green 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 for a 6-6 six, six trampling elemental incarnation. Not a dinosaur, not a transformer, not a vehicle. If damage would be dealt to a creature you control other than vigor, prevent that damage. Put a plus one plus one counter on that creature for each one damage prevented this way. Now it's really important to see the distinction between vigor and a card that's very similar like bellowing Aegisaur. Vigor will put that many plus one plus one counters. Now that's really powerful, so 5 damage will get 5 counters on your whole team. The Aegisaur will basically have 1 instance of Enrage if 5 damage is dealt, and they'll put 1 counter on your whole team. Now this is true with a lot of other cards as well. Hornet's Nest, Blood Hatch, Nantuko, Druid's Call, Saber Ants. If you deal a ton of damage to these great creature producers, you'll flood the board with creatures. But if you do that same amount of damage to a raptor hatchling, you will just get one instance of enrage and one 3-3 three, three green dinosaur creature token with trample. So if we want to take advantage of enrage, we want controllable small amounts of damage, like the pyrohemia, like the ballista. But if we want to take advantage of the cards like Vigor and Hornet's Nest, we want huge instances of damage, like Star of Extinction doing 20 damage and getting 20 Hornets or 20 Squirrels or 20 plus one plus one counters. 
I think we need to include Star of Extinction in the dinosaur deck. It just needs to be in there. So why don't we go a little bit deeper into this strategy with cards like Blasphemous Act, getting 13 things, Hour of Devastation, Chandra's Ignition, Chandra Flame Color. These are also the board wipes that we liked so much. We liked having board wipes because our vehicles dodged them. So maybe this is seeming like a little bit more of a unified strategy after all. You know, if we're going to be forced to play Star of Extinction, I mean, we just got to, we should probably run Stuffy Doll, Boros Reckoner, Spite Mare, Arc Bond. <laughs> All of these cards could redirect that 20 damage of Star of Extinction straight at your opponent's face. And also these cards work particularly well with even things like the Raging Swordtooth or Pyrohemia. So now I'm imagining this deck. It's full of dinosaurs, it's full of vehicles, it's full of creatures that can redirect damage. I'm liking the sound of this, but I feel like we're missing out on one of those categories. We clearly don't have enough Transformers. Unfortunately, there are no other cards from the Transformers universe to receive Grimlock's buff. But wait. Mark Rosewater, guru of the Silver Border, and Rules Aficionado says that a Transformer is any double-faced card that uses the Transform keyword action. Oh my gosh, everyone. Grimlock is our official werewolf commander because all the Transform cards can fit in perfectly in this deck. So let's talk about werewolves. I think that the first werewolf we have to jump into is Huntmaster of the Fells, Ravager of the Fells. It's one of the best werewolves out there. And you know what? We will invite Ulrich of the Crowlin Horde into our deck. Sure, you can come along too. And just think about it. Both of these creatures will get huge. This pump is really powerful for them. I also have to say that one of the best werewolves out there, Duskwatch Recruiter. I'm putting it in a lot of decks. It's really good. Not only will it get you cards later on in the game, but flipping it is not that bad because being able to ramp is really strong. Sage of Ancient Lore will also replace itself, giving you a little bit of card draw. Mana Werewolves certainly have a home, Scorned Villager and Uvenvald Captive, but also Conduit of Storms. But next, we know that Werewolves belong in this deck because we have the ultimate synergy, Smoldering Werewolf. When it enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to each of up to two target creatures. Smoldering Werewolf is an Enrage Enabler, just like Pyrohemia and Ballista Charger and Raging Swordtooth. They all come together. Actually, Werewolves fits really well with this. Remember how I said that dinosaurs and vehicles are a little bit shallow when it comes to card quality? Well, werewolves fits into that too, and so when you combine all three of these tribes, they kind of blend together really well, and we can cherry pick our favorites among each one. So you might ask yourself, do both sides get this plus two plus O oh buff? And yes, they do. And we can also talk about other Transformers. We're not just limited to werewolves. We can drop Avacyn in this deck. Oh my gosh, and when Avacyn flips, it deals 3 damage to each other creature and each opponent. Another Enrage Enabler in our Transform deck! I also like that all of our Transform cards don't have to be werewolves. I kind of like Lone Rider, especially because with Grimlock out, it's a 3-1 for Strike Lifelink, and when you gain 3 life, you flip it into it that rides as 1. And that becomes a 7-4 First Strike Trample Lifelink. That's an insane card. Now, I don't think that this is a game-breaking card, but it's certainly pretty cool and interesting, and I don't think I've ever seen it at a commander table. It'll be nice if it finds a home. So now I'm thinking of other double-faced cards, and my mind immediately moves to Meld. When Mark Rosewater said that Eldritch Moon Meld cards counted as Transformers, I got very excited only to have my hopes dashed because he clarified and he said, no, they're not Transformers in a later blog. So that could be one piece of confusion that you might run into. But nevertheless, I think I'm going to include meld creatures. They do not get the buff. 
But if this is a transform tribal, if I'm trying to really get into these transforms and double face cards and flipping things, I think Meld really deserves a place in my deck. So not getting the buff, Gisela the Broken Blade and Bruno the Fading Light will turn into Brusella Voice of Nightmares, which honestly doesn't need a buff. It's insane on its own. And we have Hanware the Writhing Township, which is created through Hanware Garrison and Hanware Battlements. I'm also a huge fan of the art on that Hanware the Writhing Township. You can see actually a lot more scale and depth to it with the two kids in the wheat looking at this abomination in the background. One thing I really love about making these videos is finding good art from the cards and blowing them up and really looking at them in a different way rather than on a piece of cardboard. And I needed to show it to you like this because one of the more frustrating things is clipping that art so that it fits into the stupid YouTube box and this art clearly needed to be shown in its entirety. Now, meld creatures not counting as transformers was a bit of a hit to me, but I took it in stride. And then the baby gate watch. They were first called as not transformers because they were exiled. But then someone said, wait, Mark, hang on. They literally transform. How can they not be transformers regardless of whether they go into exile or not? And Mark Rosarder was like, you know what? You're right. They say transform on them. They are transformers. So the flip walkers will get these buffs. I think the best one has got to be Nyssa. Nyssa is just really great. But Chandra, pretty powerful too. Getting that buff lets you flip Chandra a little bit easier. This is really not the deck for Kytheon, so he's like, mm, maybe if you want to include all of them, that's fine. But this category is more about the flavor as well. I think that this is just a transform deck. And so if you want to go with transforms, let's put in all of them. How about Vance's Blasting Station and Rowing Rites of Itlamok? Do they get a buff from Grimlock? No, they turn into lands, but these are great cards in their own right, and why not play cool transform cards? Treasure Map and Thaumatic Compass are also great flip cards, and keeping with our transform theme, some of the most flavorful cards for this deck have to be Conqueror's Galleon and Arlen Cord. Do they get a good buff from our commander? No, not really. But Conqueror's Galleon is a flip vehicle. Oh my gosh, that's exactly what we're, we're going for transform cards and we're going for vehicles. Arlen Cord is a transforming werewolf. They really don't take advantage of Grimlock at all, but they totally fit in with this deck. We're going to be having a deck where we're constantly transforming everything. And honestly, we're going to be winning this game with style points. But not to say, Grimlock is a powerful card in its own right. And Grimlock, Ferocious King, the dinosaur side, an 8-8 Trampler? That's pretty impressive. If you want to lean on how powerful the dinosaur side is, you could throw in a little bit of a sub-strategy of Voltron, throw in some equipment. And you know what? If I was going to throw in a piece of equipment, I'd just have to throw in a transforming equipment. Neglected Heirloom. It costs one mana, one to equip, but when it flips, it gets plus three, plus three, and first strike to the equipped creature. Very cool. Now, I have gone far and wide trying to find out the case. If you equip Neglected Heirloom to Grimlock Dinobot Leader, and then you pay two to convert Grimlock into Grimlock Ferocious King, will the Neglected Heirloom transform into Ashmouth Blade? Now you might think, yeah, you flipped over an equipped creature, of course it's going to work, but wait, Grimlock does not say transform. It says Grimlock becomes the Ferocious King. And Neglected Heirloom says, when equipped creature transforms, transform the neglected heirloom into the Ashmouth Blade. 
I went to judge chat and they're divided. Some of them are saying, no, 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 we don't do the silver bordered stuff. And other people are saying, no, transform needs to be the word on the card. Other people are saying, well, look, Grimlock can't say transform on it because that's a magic thing. And clearly it is transforming. Oh, let's look at the rules for double faced cards. Oh, they all transform. So they're somehow connected, even though it's not written. Here's the thing. Does this deck really need the exact rules for this interaction? No, not really. I'm going to throw in the Neglected Heirloom because it's another Transform card. And I'm going to equip it to Grimlock and hopefully we don't get into an argument when I have an 11-11 first striking trampling Grimlock Ferocious King swinging at my opponents. So we're going to do one more thing. We're going to take it up a notch to get even crazier. And then I'm going to tell you how you can make this deck work if you're not into silver bordered cards. So the next step is, hey, if we take the card Mishra's Toy Workshop, which is another silver bordered card, and use Transformers Toys, will they get the buff from Grimlock Dinobot Leader? Yes. Yes, they do. So Mishra's Toy Workshop is a crazy land that lets you put tokens into play, but use toys to represent those tokens. And if those toys are Transformers, according to Mark Rosewater, they will also get the buff. Now, this doesn't work very well in this deck because <laughs> we don't have a lot of token producers and the token producers we do have, like Arlen Cord, don't work with Mishra's Toy Workshop. But if you want to go all in on the crazy silver bordered stuff, then you could add a little bit of support for this card, but make sure that you bring the right Transformers I suggest you use the Constructicons because you can bring one toy and then when you make tokens, you can pull them off and make them into individual bulldozers and cement mixers. And also as a child, I remember this toy being really awesome. So I give it my stamp of approval. All right. So let's say you like this deck. You like the idea of all of this crazy jank. You got a from the vault transform and you sold the Jace and now you need to find a place for all the other cards, whatever, whatever. You like this, but you know that your playgroup is not going to go for the Grimlock Dinobot leader. Or you realize it's like 60 bucks online and you don't want to buy a silver bordered card that costs that much money. Okay, so here's a few workarounds. Number one, I would really suggest you use Gahiji Honored One. I actually think that this is a really, really powerful card in its own right. I think it's a great commander that's totally underplayed, but if we look at it, Whenever a creature attacks one of your opponents or a planeswalker your opponent controls, that creature gets plus two plus oh until end of turn. That is the plus two plus oh on every single attacking creature. Grimlock only gives that to dinosaurs, vehicles, and transformers. Now, I know that Grimlock has that other side of being a gigantic beater, this 8-8 ferocious king, but Gahiji has another really cool ability, which is politics. Because Gahiji gives this trigger whenever a creature attacks any of your opponents. So if your opponents attack each other, Gahiji will give them a buff as well. So Gahiji pumps your team while discouraging people from attacking you. He could just be a way better commander than Grimlock. And so if someone's having a hard time, just switch it out, throw Gahiji up there, and then suddenly you have your cool thematic commander transform deck without the silver border. That has been my Grimlock Transformer Tribal. Thank you so much for joining me. And I have to thank my patrons who have brought you this video because of their tremendous support. Thank you, patrons. My name is Jumbo Commander and I make tons of Commander content. I'm gonna have even more videos coming out. If you want to chat, you can leave a comment below. Find me on Twitter at Jumbo Commander, something longer, and email jumbocommander at gmail.com. If you want to support me like so many others, Jumbo Commander on Patreon. Thank you again, and I'll see you guys real soon.